today we're at Todd's Burning's Place in Hamilton, South West Victoria. We're taking a look at some of the drainage systems he's implemented on farm. Todd, with his family, run a mixed enterprise farm of 1,100 hectares in Hamilton, South West Victoria. A combination of being a high rainfall zone and poorly structured clay subsoil can result in consistent waterlogging issues for their farming system. G'day Todd, how are you going? Good thanks Greta. Lovely Good to see you, likewise. Come and have a look at it. You can't miss it when you walk in, can you? No, the, save the season. <laughs> so Todd, it's a pretty impressive machine you've got here. What was the motivation behind building this one in particular? There's a couple of motivations. Um, traditionally this area has been nearly solely livestock. Um, it's traditionally been too wet to crop. Yeah. Um, so waterlogging is the, the biggest aim and still running, wanting to run a mixed system with sheep, um, not wanting to go down the raised bed path. They do, they do work in this country. They're very successful and the ones that have got them, but that wasn't something we really wanted to do. Kept a very close eye on this research, subsoil amelioration, subsoil manuring from um, the early stuff back in 2006. Excellent, it's quite the machine. So I suppose what sort of waterlogging do you get here? It's obviously a high rainfall zone and your you know, soils are quite clay dense. What sort of does it look like in season? So we're at um, clay loam or uh, silty clay loam over heavy clay, high magnesium levels in our clay um, with a 650 mil rainfall. So depending on what the wind is like, depending on what the evaporation is like, typically we'd expect 70-80% of our paddocks to go slightly anaerobic or fully anaerobic three years out of five. So with the cost of doing business now, cost of cropping, um, you have to do something. You can't afford to be losing that volume of crop. Mm. And the likes of 2016, this property we're on standing on at the moment, 2016 down here was a complete wipeout. Yeah. Um, there was nearly half the paddocks we didn't even harvest. It just, there was just nothing left. Not ideal. So that, that's not ideal, which has been a big step change between 16 and this year. This year was much worse than 2016 for us and um, the yields were still quite, quite respectable. What was the process like for getting this machine into its physical state from paper to here now? The machine got in the thought process, I reckon, about 2014, 2015, that we decided we we're going to start moving forward. Um, 2016, we bought some shanks. So that I thought was confident, it took me a long time to find a time that I was confident we were actually going to be able to get the manure to where we wanted it to be. And um, sort of paused there for a while, 2016 onwards, because GRDC then put some funding in to Roger Armstrong's project. And I thought, we'll, we'll wait and see what was going to develop there. And um, we were so desperately searching for an engineer to do it, because um, us being sheep farmers, uh, I have a, have a few ideas about what you can do, but actually putting them welder to welder to metal is not quite way our ability and um yeah so 2018 metal actually got cut and um it was a pretty well two-year process getting it built um we started with the subframe with the tines got that all sorted and um then we started playing around with it different box designs sort of mock-up box designs and boot designs on the top of that before we actually built the bin on top. So how does it generally work, like just as a overview? Uh, pretty simple compared to a few other machines that have come out. It's just, we're basically feeding the material to the front where I can see it out of the tractor to make sure that it's all flowing properly. Mm -hmm. um, dropping it down, delivering it back to the boot um, with augers and um, just using gravity to drop it down. And away you go. And away we go. So what's been the plan then for the farm? Do you just go out and go into any paddock you like or have you got a system or a plan for how it's going to be utilised? Waterlogging was our main aim to fix with this. And I, with the, we had done some um, trial work with a DPI machine but way back in 2013 and I had seen that the water, it changed the water movement. So when we first started in 2020 onwards and um, we wanted to get on top of the ridges, mm to start right on top and hopefully pick paddocks that we haven't got much water coming in from outside to deal with. And then we'd start our whole drainage system down the slope from there. Yeah, okay. So we, we, sort of, we were aiming to do 100 hectares a year. Um, the last two years we've done 80 hectares, and, but um, stock, stock take precedence. And it, it's relatively quick if you had months to put into it. Yeah. You could do a lot of hectares, but um, 
being a mixed farm and we've got to get our stock work done you sort of you do a few days on it and then go and do something else and you might miss a couple of weeks and <laughs> come back to it again. It's farming so, isn't it? So yeah for the money we've spent on it we don't utilise it that many hours for what we possibly could but um, yeah we sort of held off last year coming into this season we just want to get that drainage mm. get the tile drainage done. How long does it take to do a, a hectare say? So when everything's running well and the manure is running happily after it's come out the screen, we're working about a hectare an hour. Yeah. So it does, it does go fairly quick until you engage rocks and then that, that slows you down. Has that been a bit of an issue at all for you that guys? It has been quite an issue. We were trying to avoid paddocks on top of the ridges without rocks to start with, but we've just worked out that all our ridges have rocks in them. <laughs> no. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's something that we've, probably, we've got to change in the future. All right, Todd, it's a pretty impressive looking machine. Any chance we can take a closer look? Sure can, Greta. Excellent. After taking a look at the subsoil machine in the shed, Todd and I went to take a look at the results in the paddock. So Todd, we're at one of the paddocks that you've treated with your subsoiling uh, machine. Can you tell me a bit about uh, the results you've been seeing from this paddock? Yes, so this one was treated in autumn 2021. Mm -hmm. um, we followed it with a crop of faber beans just because that's where the rotation was going with this paddock. And now I've gone with canola here in 2022, which is, was just shy of a four, th four tonne to the hectare delivered average off of it this year with no urea applied. Yeah. Lack of sunlight probably reduced that yield on that this year. Um, I would have, was expecting a little bit more. This paddock now just needs about 400 metres of pipe for the nine hectares on the, on the southern headland and a little bit up um, one low spot in the paddock. And we'll have a paddock now that from what used to be we'd expect to lose in the season we've just had, we'd expect to lose probably 80, 85% of this paddock to waterlogging. And this year we've had achieved probably close to 90% of that hasn't gone anaerobic at all and produced good yields off of it. Um, with the tile plough now, post the subsoil amelioration or subsoil manuring, um, we're going to get a paddock here that is pretty well risk free on water logging in any season and um, pushing some very high potential. Are you seeing this on all the paddocks you've been subsoiling or is it just exclusive to somewhere where you've had poor performance or is it increasing it across the board? So th this year it's pretty well doubled our yield from waterlogging. Reduction in waterlogging, we probably could have got a little bit more out of it if we had the pipe in, but we didn't have the pipe in. Across the paddocks it's very much dependent at the moment on slope, on how much headland they got and what percentage we're losing. So the paddocks we have treated we're typically losing still without the tile drainage in the headlands and the spoon drains. We're still losing anywhere from 10% to one paddock. We still lost 50% this year because that paddock had water flowing through it from a surrounding paddocks that we couldn't deal with. So you think that the subsoiling lack alone is worth it, even if you couldn't put those pipes and things in, would that be something you would, would still do? No, it really has got to be combined with a tile plow. We just, you, it's just too much, there's too much money foregone to do the treatment that you can't really afford to lose it. Yeah. And you don't know until it happens how much you're going to lose. Purely because of the fact that the water's now moving underground. So if you've got any water coming in from surrounding paddocks, it ends up underground and it probably makes the water logging problem worse. When you've got water flowing over land from surrounding paddocks onto the paddock you've treated, which then ends up underground. The manuring just can't cope with that level of water when it ends up underground. Yeah. We're pausing a little bit on the manuring this year purely because we've got to get the pipes in. Do you think the process of building and operating that machine still makes it worthwhile? Yes, yeah, the subsoil amelioration. Um, I'm pretty confident once we get the drainage issue sorted out with the tile plough um, that we're pretty well going to hold, irrespective of the season, whether it's dry, wet, good or bad, we're pretty well going to go close to doubling our yields. Yeah. So the return on investment is very much there. It's just the sheer cost that it is to do it and then trafficability becomes very difficult. When it gets wet, um, it stays wet, it gets soft yeah. and you just cannot get over it. 
we got to do something yeah. about removing that water that's perched underground. I suppose this has only just been recently treated. How long do you expect that to last before you have to come back out and, and do it again? Second crop that's been on this treated, um, I don't expect to be back in here. With the rainfall this region gets, I envisage that I'm going to do a second pass at a deeper depth with the subsoil and amelioration because I think we've got the rainfall to do it and we've probably got more opportunity to either increase the yields higher um, if we do it a second time. Yeah. So I, I personally believe that once off we've stepped the yields up but I'll do it a second time, split those rows, and I think we'll be able to jump the yields up even again. So then you've also spoken a bit about this um, tile plough. What sort of machine are you using for that? So we've imported a US made, um, US made Solmax tile plough. There's a few other breeds over there, but that's just one we could get the easiest. Yeah. Um, and it's all GPS controlled, so all the pipes will be put in on grade and um, it's just the, system, the GPS system we were using, that was the one that was going to sit in, fit in the best. After seeing the results, I was keen to take a look at the tile plough and how that would fit also into their system. So you've recently purchased this soil max tile plough. How do you see it fitting into your farming system? Uh, with, with the subsoil amelioration, the manure lines we're putting down, um, we're going to get very quick soil water movement down those lines, so they're acting as a mould drain. Mm -hmm. So we're, we were intending to do something before, when we first started amelioration, I was expecting something like this to happen, that we were going to need subsurface drainage, but. Um, yeah, it's going to give us very quick, especially after the year, we've just had very quick evacuation of excess water off the paddock when we can get it in a slotted agri pipe, aggy pipe at the end. Cool. And yeah, get it off. So it'll fit in with your subsoil amelioration work as well then? Yes, the subsoil amelioration is going to make this machine a lot cheaper per hectare to lay pipe because we can, we can evacuate the water off such a large area in the paddock so easily with the manure lines. So how do you suppose the issues that you think you might face with using something like this in your system? Uh, just the pipe sizing is going to be our biggest constraint because the water's coming to the headlands or the low spots so quick yeah. in sub 20, 24 hours. Whereas a normal tile layout system, it takes 36 up to 54 hours, depending on how how close you put the pipes together to get to your mains, whereas what we're doing, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take such a short period of time to arrive there, so we're going to have to put a lot of aggregate down with the pipe to get the water in the pipe quickly. Yeah. So the aggregate's actually going to cost more per linear metre than what the pipe is. So generally, I think in a tile drainage system in Australia, it'll probably most likely be done without aggregate, yeah. but we'll have to use aggregate just with the amelioration. Cool. So how long is this system going to last, do you reckon, using the tile plough? How long's a piece of string? But I, <laughs> I'd expect that the manure is going to keep, well, the, the breakdown of the manure, but the organic matter and the way it's sitting in the soil will still give us drainage five, ten years later quite easily. But by that stage, we will probably will have re ripped and laid manure deeper at anyway, so um, yeah, I'd expect to be back in the paddock re-manuring it within 10 years. I suppose, Todd, the million dollar question is what are you hoping to achieve with all of this? It's obviously a lot of time, effort and outlay you've put into, you know, utilising these implements. What do you think your, the results will be? Well, we're aiming, at, I think it's going to be very achievable to have a fully 100% of the paddock um, fully drained or, or the ability never to go anaerobic at any stage through the growing season. Yeah. Um, ideally, we want to get the manuring process to where we are actually retaining more moisture or extracting more moisture out the clay so we can re retain more moisture through the winter. But, and this will end up then as a um, insurance policy that when we do get years like we've just had where we've had over a thousand millimetres of rain here, 
that we don't lose any crop. Yeah. Um, the, the manure and the amelioration process is rather expensive and you, you want to protect that investment as much as possible. So what else do you use on farm to help manage that water logging at all? So previously we've been using a lot of spoon drains. Yep. So any other wet area would, would put a spoon drain in because we have got a lot of undulations and um, elevation changes in this country here that we can evacuate the water on the surface rather quickly. Um, they work to a point but they don't save the crop in a year like we've just had, just the sheer volume coming down the slopes. Um, but as soon as we've subsoil manured a paddock or subsoil ameliorated them, our water does no longer run across the surface anymore. Um, just the way we've treated that and the topsoil slotting down the manure lines, the water then all moves underground. So as soon as we've manured a paddock, the spoon drains become ineffective because the water ends up below the spoon drain and can't actually rise to the surface unless it's pressurised to get in the spoon drain. Yeah. The spoon drains are effective to a point, but they, in a year like we've just had, they don't save the crop for us in this, in this environment. So we, we're going on the next step now to, to manuring and then um, tile ploughing to, to get complete drainage. Well, thank you so much for showing me around your farm today and two of the implements you use to help serve your drainage. It's been really informative. Thanks, Rita. As we've seen from Todd today, there's been a lot of effort gone into developing, creating and implementing different types of drainage solutions. It's great to see such innovation from farmers like Todd and how it benefits their farming systems. <laughs>